So we're learning the Mimer, Anila Daidi Daidi Li of the Al Rebbe, which originally is found in Lakuti Teira, which is one of the two Sfarim of the Al Rebbe on the Parshias and on different Yom Tevim. The first volume is called Teira Oyer, the second one is called Lakuti Teira. Teira Oyer has Bereshis and Shmois, Lakuti Teira covers Vayikra Bamidbar and uh, Tevarim, as well as Shir Shirim. Uh, Megillah Sester, I believe. No, Megillah Sester actually is in the back of Torah, I think. Anyway, um, and we're using the text Hasidus Muva Eris on page Yud Aleph. We're now the second paragraph. Let me just give a, a brief recap. And the Alter Rebbe began with the Pesach, the quote from Shira Shira, Manila Doide Vedoide Li, I am to my beloved, my beloved is to me. And right away, he tells us that this is a Rosh Tevis, an acronym, for Elo, Aleph Lamed Vav Lamed are the first four letters of the first four words in that posik, which means that the month of Elo <coughs> is associated with I am to my beloved, my beloved is to me. And what does that mean? The Al Rebbe says the process of Anila Doidi, I begin my, the relationship with my beloved, and then the, my beloved response to me is. The what we experience during Elul as a preparation for the Yom Neiroim, the days of war, we prepare ourselves with bringing ourselves closer to Hashem through us making an accounting of what's going on, etc. The Al Rebbe adds to that general thought, which is a Jewish thought, the Torah thought, that the the process of Anili Doidi also has another two words in it, the Daidi Li, and it was the process of Elul. The Daidi Li refers to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and the uh, Sukkot and Simchas Torah, the month of Tishrei, which is when Hashem reciprocates to our to our Avoda, to our initiation. But nevertheless, it's part of the same acronym of Anila Daidi Daidi Li of Elul. Why is that? Because when, there's a, when there is a meserusa de la tata, an arousal from below, it generates a response called the serusa de la ila, an arousal from above. So the Alter Rebbe, knowing that and teaching that, he says that this is why we need the serusa de la ila to be on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. This is what we learned yesterday. And that is because in order for fear of God and love for God, which by the way, the fear, fear of God is represented by Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and the love for Hashem is represented by Sukkot and Simchas Torah, as he brings the verses, my left is under my head, the right embraces me, Smoile refers to Yira, Yemina refers to the right, refers to Ava, and Tachas L'Roishi refers to Rosh, Rosh Hashanah. The left, Gira, Gvura, and all that is associated with, with, with Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, the ten days of Aseris and Mitshuva. Uh, and the, the Amino in the right represents the Ava, Tachapkeni, embraces him, is the Sukkah. When we sit in the Sukkah, we're embraced by Hashem. So to Simchus Teira, which means that Aseris and when we dance with the Teira, we embrace the Teira. So the, 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 the last two festivals of the Tishrei, are, are, is represented by the concept of the, the embrace. Anyway, the Alte Rebbe says that in order for there to be Yir and Ava throughout the year in a way that's emes, that's truthful, you need to establish it and, and create that, uh, that reality on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Because if not, it remains chitzenius, superficial. He brings the, um, he, he, the language of the Alter Rebbe on page 10, line 3 is, Yire al p'neim kol ha-shona. It's third line set, V'hoisa yirose al p'neim. The fear of God will be on their faces, kol ha-shona, throughout the year. I explained yesterday, al p'neim doesn't mean only faces, it means b'pnimius. If you want the Yira to be existent throughout the year, it must penetrate your essence, your Pneumius. Otherwise, it's a passing fancy. 
It's, it's just something, that, it's a fleeting thought. It's there for a while, and when something comes and disturbs you, us, in a way that uh, contradicts or makes it more difficult to experience Yira, we drop the Yira. All of a sudden, we drop the Yira. And that's what Alter Rebbe says on that same third line, continuing to Yira's Hashem Vavosi, the fear of God and love for God, a nasuya v'natuya b'levodim is not made, it's not created and planted in man's heart. Mikoyach atzma on his own initiation. Kiim mikoyach ha'ora, rather it must come from the emanation. Hanim shecholav that's drawn upon him. Nil ma'ila be'eis man who's glossy from above at the time of the revelation. Meaning to say, in simple English, that if you want pni the yira avi, ava, avi, and the ava to be b'pnimius, you need to be in the zone, and the right time zone. If you're not in the right time zone, you will work and work and work, and you will accomplish, but it won't be beponemius. And, 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 and for it to remain, to be on your face throughout the year, meaning for it to be an experience that is guaranteed, kind of, you have to have picked it up when God gives it... Uh, and reveals himself in that mode. And when is that? Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur. The ten days. So this is an argument for what I call, one second Hillel, not location, 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 but timing, timing, and timing. It's all about the timing. Okay? So in other words, imagine now that you're out, you're out uh, in the desert, you're out, you know, to- giving tours in Galil or here or there, and, and, and something, you see something that's so inspirational, so awesome, and, 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 and you have a feeling of that awe for Hashem. You take that feeling, which, by the way, what I'm saying now is brought down in the Holy Sfarim of the Magid and the Baal Shem Tov and the Talmidi HaMagid. When a person has a, a feeling for love, of love, or feeling of fear in mundane matters, from whatever it is, they teach us you have to transform it at that moment for God. So you see a beautiful piece of art and your heart is moved with love towards the art, which is neutral, it's not bad, but it's not yet holy. So the Holy Swarm say, that's the moment you should meditate and reflect upon Hashem, how, how wonderful and, how, and beautiful and special Hashem is, and transform, or better said, elevate that mundane love to a holy love. And they say this also when it comes to Tithes, you know, Tithes Zoros, which are brought in the Sfarim, inappropriate lusts, uh, etc. So the Holy Sfarim say what you're supposed to do is immediately use that lustful feeling that's negative and, 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 and antithetical to God for God. Turn it around and say, I lust God. <laughs> I love God. And, and through, through meditating on Hashem. The Alter Rebbe, by the way, in chapter 28 of Tanya, does not recommend we do this. You know why? Because the Alter Rebbe says, if you're sinking yourself in quicksand, you can't elevate anything. You're in schmutz. How can you elevate something? First get out of the schmutz, and then you can elevate something. But you must know that the other Talmidia Maggit disagreed. Uh, Again, outwardly it's a disagreement. I mean, some people have tried reconciling the two the two, the, the two approaches. But the other time, they say, no. It's, it's at that moment, I want you to quickly change. You know, how to do that is, is, is according to the Alter Rebbe, and, and I think, it, to me, very difficult or impossible. Because you're, you, yourself, you, you're sinking quickly, and you want me to elevate something? I'm sinking. I can't. First, I got to be on the earth and not be sinking to be able to elevate. But anyway, why do I mention this? Because, so Avi's out there, you know, in, in the Galil, and he's thinking, about, and he sees a beautiful scene, right? Says the Alter Rebbe here, that unless on Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, the ten days, you, uh, you, you took that awe, timing of awe, and internalized it, it is impossible for that experience to be it's, it's a good experience, and it should be done. But if you want it to be kavua, you hear the, here he uses the word natua, 
Natua. What it planted, planted in your heart. In other words, your heart has been planted with a love for God, so that wherever you are, the plantation grows. The plantation is experienced. Says the Altareb, it's all the timing. Why? Because the initiation was not with you, it was with God. The Tzeresi Mechuva is this man, his galut. It's a time when in the terminology of the Kabbalah Zayar, Kiruv HaMo'or El HaNitzutz. The closeness of the illuminary to the spark. It begins with the illuminary saying, I want to be close to the spark. So when Hashem initiates the timing of love and awe, or awe and love, and you identify with the timing, then your, your sensation of awe and love is no longer a human condition, but rather a godly experience. So, and we spoke about this yesterday, but just to elaborate another, another, for another minute, a few minutes. When you have a lover and a love, a lover loving something that's love, that he, that he or she loves, and the reciprocation from the love to the lover, that relationship is great. However, it's limited. It's limited to what you understand about what's being loved. So if you understand that I love the love because the love is, it, 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 it really excites me intellectually, your love is limited to your intellect. Emotionally, it's, lo- it's limited to an emotion. And so with other types of character traits that generate the bond between the lover and the loved, it's mukbal. It's limited. And I spoke a lot, a lot about this yesterday, so I gave examples, you know, in relationships. You don't drop a relationship because you're out of love. You know why? Because if your relationship is based on love, it's, it's I'm sorry to say, it's lacking a foundation. Kedushin, according to the Holy Taita, is way beyond, it transcends, you know, I'm marrying her or I'm marrying him because he looks good. He feels good. He has deep pockets. He's bright. That's all chitzonius, superficial. The, the true bond is because I come to a point where I understand we are two halves, i.e. what we call a zivug, a pair, meaning your souls are pairs. Not your bodies are pairs. Your bodies might be actually different, very different than each other. Who cares? If the neshamas are from the same place on the tree of life as explained in Kabbalah, then you're for each other. You're two halves of a whole. The Alter Rebbe says here to experience this in our relationship with Hashem requires Pneumius. When is Pneumius available? When Hashem makes it available, because Hashem is limitless, Yaakov. Hashem is limitless. Hashem says, I'm taking 10 days, and during those 10 days, I'm going to shower the Jewish world, the Jewish people, with an opportunity that I don't give throughout the year. And if, and that's why I said Hila before, and I know you want to ask something, I'll let you in a moment comment, that that's why it's all in the timing. If you miss those 10 days, of course you could, you could and should do tshuva at any time. You should work towards you know, being mesmerized by God's awesomeness when you stand in the Galil and look at the mountains and the water and the Kinneret and everything else. Absolutely. But remember that that's your perspective, my perspective, our perspective, which is limited. And if it's limited, it can be challenged and it can be as though it never existed. And that's why we have fallout. Why do we have fallout? And I don't mean only by the teenagers, the young people, by anyone and everyone. It's because for some reason they didn't internalize, um, you, the word internalize in Hebrew it would be pneumious. It wasn't a pneumious dick relationship. It was, it was always somewhat chitzainis dick, external, superficial. They tell over the story with one of the Talmudia Hamagit, who started to drink, 
and he became kind of an alcoholic. And uh, I forget which other tzaddik said, it's because there are veremlach, uh, uh, the word in Yiddish for a worm is verem. Veremlach is like a play on the... There is veremlach in his cup. There are worms creeping in his brain. What does that mean? It doesn't mean literally. It means there are some um, heretical thoughts up here in his cup. And no one knows, only he knows, but he's questioning God, questioning Torah, questioning how could this be, he has different ideas. So the other tzaddik said, the drunkness, that he, the al- becoming an alcoholic and, 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 and falling and all that, became because when we were by the Magid as students, I detected in him, we detected in him, that he has some vermlach creeping in the head. Here, it's your turn. Uh, well, then, I just uh, had a number of thoughts, but I'll just share share one. That that uh, when you were talking about sort of being being at the right place at the right time, I was reminded of the 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 uh, halacha that the Gemara discusses in Rosh Hashanah, I believe. Uh, 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 but regarding Birchas Kohanim, they have to be sort of in front of the Kohanim in order to like be in the pathway of the blessing. So, in both this idea of time and in this idea of space, you have a similar parallel idea. Right. You know, every morning we say, in Matayvu Yaakov, what do we say? Eis Rotsoy, on auspicious time. Capitalizing that time, I told you the story with the Rebbe, right? 1958 or so, Purim Fabrengen, he speaks about wealth, and he asks those that want to have a bracha for Ashiros, raise your hand. Most Hasidim don't raise their hand, they're embarrassed. They're Hasid, they should ask for Gashmis, for money. And the Rebbe said afterwards, you're Hasidim Shaitim, you're foolish Hasidim. Here was a, a bracha, it was Purim, that's waiting to, was- what? Purim. Velvels, Purim. And on Purim, you could, you, you know, the, the, the rebel revealed. We didn't know that. He, he, the tzaddik sees something. He reveals it. He shares it in 770 with a crowd of people. And all of a sudden, your religiosity and your Hasidic guide gets in the way. And only three people raise their hand. And today, we know who they are. And we know that they became very wealthy. A fact. That's a fact of life. Yes. I, I just want to share with you the Chevra. If I, if I never did, there's a beautiful story about uh, the Dibre Chaim. That um, uh, the custom in Sons apparently was Motse uh, Simchas Torah. Yes. The Rebbe would throw out apples to the Chasidim. Right. They still do that, by the way, in Sons. Yeah? Yeah. So, so uh, apparently. Uh, it got kind of rough, you know, people... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they're fighting uh, to get, grab uh, the apples. You know, Pushing push to get the apples. So the Rebbe announced, uh, he, he said, uh, he said, yeah, I want everybody to st- st- stand in the same place, and anybody who moves to go move forward to get an apple, they'll have 10 years of bad luck. And uh, so everybody's standing in in the, in, uh, what, the same place, you know, very uh, patiently and waiting, except for one old guy. Uh, and they said, to, and, uh, and he's pushing to the front. And uh, so they said, well, didn't you hear what the Rebbe said? He said, sure, I heard it. He said, 10 years, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go now into the text. Page Yud Aleph. The paragraph begins with Vihine Noida. Vihine Noida, it's known, it's brought in the Holy Svarim, Shebe Elul, that during the month of Elul, whose man, it's a time of his Galus Yud Gimel Midas A time when the 13 attributes of mercy, Hashem, Hashem, Keel, Erech, Apayim, Rechesev, Emes, Nitzchesev, Lofim, that's what we're talking about, 13 attributes of mercy, are his galut. Yaakov, why does the Alter Rebbe use the word his galut? 
because you know that we just davened, or going to daven, depending on where you are at this point, geographically, you know that when we say Tachnun, we say the 30, Vayavar Hashem Alpanov. So every day during the week, we have the revel, we have the Yud Gimim and the Sarachamim. However, the Yud Gimim and the Sarachamim daily is in a disguised way. And number two, it's for the Gashmias of a person. During Elul, it's for the Ruchnias, for the Shama. This is a general difference between the Yudgim Musarachamim throughout the year and Yudgim Musarachamim in Elul, that the primary aspect of the Yudgim Musarachamim, that God should have compassion on us and, and mercy and love and Baba and all the Midos, for the Gashmias, for the Goof. Elul! We seize the Yudgim with the Sorachamim for the Neshama. We want our Neshama to have mercy, our Neshama to have love and awe. And the Alter says that's why it's the Zman of the Hisgalus Yudmid the Sorachamim. During Elul, there is the revelation. What do you mean the revelation? When the Yudgim with the Sorachamim are, are for the purpose of the material, the body. So the body is not in sync with the with the with the soul with the with the sarachamim in a way that's apparent because the body covers the material matter covers godliness. But in Khaidashalo here we have an opportunity for the for the Yudgimu Midasarachamim to be apparent. Because what is the drive and focus of the Yudgimil Sarachim during Elul? The Neshama. And, and, and this is very important, Hebra. In other words, what's the focus of Chaydesh Elul? It's not about the Gashmias, our Gashmias. It's about our Ruchnias. And if our Ruchnias will be in place, the Gashmias will follow. And the Rebbe said once in a Mimer that they just found in 1968, they found the, the notes of the Mimer and they just printed it for this pair Shabbos. The Rebbe says, when Gashmias comes as a result of Ruchnias, it's healthier Gashmias, better Gashmias, and more Gashmias. When Gashmias comes only for its own sake, it's limited. But if the Ruchnias brings the Gashmias, that's Gewaldic Gashmias. So El is the Anila, uh, the Yugimu Midas Arachim, the 13 attributes of mercy, that we ask Hashem to have mercy. For what? For who? Not for my suspenders, and not for my beard. It's and it's for my soul, my neshama. Have mercy on my neshama. That my neshama needs tikkun in this area, in that area. And please help me. And that's why, possibly, the Alter Rebbe uses the word his galus, because it's revealed. Because it, because since the focus of El is neshama, soul, like ma- issues, it you give the sarachim in goes hand in hand with soul-like issues. To comprehend this, what's bothering the Alter Rebbe that he says, you'll see in a moment. If Moshe, there's such an awesome revelation of 13 attributes of God's mercy present right now, during this month, why are they weekdays? Ve'enim yomtiv, and why are why are all the days not ha- uh, yomtiv? Kumei Shabbos says like Shabbos the yomtiv. Shabehem his galus elikus, pchinas haores elikusi yisbarich. My friends, what go what takes place during Shabbos and yomtiv? Oh well, you'll ask the average person. It says ba Shabbos ba menucha. All the quotes from Chazal. It's all true. But spiritually, what is happening in the universe, in the cosmos, that makes, that Hashem says, therefore you should rest? The answer is, you're in tune with God's thought. You see, during the week, God spoke. Yehi or, yehi this, yehi that. That's the Dibur of Hashem. The Gemara says, Dibur is Maise Zuta, Yonason. There is an act, an actual act, that's a real maise. The Gemara says, when you speak, 
It's called a miniature act. In the language of the Gemara, Mase Zuta. Zuta means miniature, small. In other words, Hashem, in creation of the six days of creation, He acted with Dibur. And therefore, Yaakov, since He did that, what is the, what is the style of the six days of the week? Acting, work. Resting during the week, Moshe, to the point where you lay on your couch or your bed or you go stay at the beach all day, I'm sorry, is antithetical to what God wants. If you're at the beach or on your couch and you're learning and you're diving and you talk counseling someone or you think about it, then you're also working. The point is, during the week, what does the Ramban say in the Torah, right? I think the Loshim Taseh Melocha. Tase, you're obligated to make work. It's not a choice. You have, we are commanded, work. Why? Because God worked. Because Hashem worked. Since we emulate, we need to emulate Hashem. Since Hashem worked during the week, we need to work. And when we don't work during the week, everyone in their own way, right? And that includes a koil yung man who should be working in the toil of Torah. If that's his job and his work. So if you don't work during the week, you're going against God. You're not emulating Hashem. That's during the week. Comes along Shabbos, but Shabbos, but Menucha. It says in Kabbalah that the energy of the world on Shabbos is from God's thought, machshava, not from God's dibur. And therefore, rest, the concept of rest, is reminiscent of thought. Why? What, what happens when a person rests? And I want to attribute this to what I heard this from my Rebbe, Rebbe Yoel Khan, my Mashpia. So it's a shloshim, the Shabbos, I believe, so the schus is the shama. I, I share this with you. So he said once that, that the idea of, of resting, you're tired, you're exhausted, Hillel. You're about to collapse on your bed or your, your, or your couch. Or you fall asleep at the table, sometimes into the soup. <laughs> oh no, you were watching. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I turned the camera off. <laughs> like Remendel said to me, today we have these video cameras, Eisen Rolev, Eisen Shemas, at all times. <laughs> anyway, so he said, Rabbi Yael said, you're tired, you're exhausted. Then you get a night's rest, or you lay down for a few hours, you wake up refreshed. The expression in Yiddish is, men kunt zu sich. That refreshed in Yiddish, in this context is, one comes, men kunt, one comes, zu sich, to himself. What does that mean, you, you come to yourself? You come to your real self. Rest brings you to the real you. Who's the real you? Your thought, not your speech, and not your behavior. You could fake it and break it in your behavior. You can also fake it and break it in your speech, where people think you are one way because you know how to. You have you have the gift of the gab, but in thought, it's between you and Hashem, and no one knows. And that's the real self, and that's why the Holy Sfora talks about watching, guarding the thoughts. Or as the famous saying, I hope Yaakov will appreciate it, but we'll say it anyway. Or well, they said to the Lubavitch Chassidim, why aren't you immersed in Shemitah Saloshin? Like the, you know, the Chofetz Chaim movement makes campaigns of Shemitah Saloshin, guarding your tongue. And then there's the idea of Tainus Dibur. So the Chassid answered, that's a very good thing, and very important. But we're into Shmiras Hamachshava. It's a different Avoida. Both are necessary. If anyone uses Shmiras Hamachshava as an excuse for not doing Shmiras Haloshin, they're mistaken. But the Nakuda is where do you begin? So the Chabad ethos is begin with the Machshava. But going back to our point, going back to our point, Moshe, when you rest, you come to yourself. Mikum tzazich. 
The place of Machshava is the deepest place in man and in Hashem. Says the Alter Rebbe over here, on Shabbos and Yom Tif, one is raised from the mundane week of speech and work to a higher platform and plateau called the world of Machshava, which is in his language, the time when there is Ha'oras Elekusa Yisborech, quoting the Alter Rebbe's words here, the emanation of godliness. And therefore, there's no place for work. And that's why there's a difference between Shabbos and Yom Tif. You understand? So it doesn't begin Shabbos and Yom Tif. I don't work. And, and it, work, it begins otherwise. Shabbos is a day of thought. And because it's a day of thought, working contradicts thought. Activity contradicts thought. Thought is inner self. Speech and action is outer self. Yes, Moshe. Madam, in question, Shabbos we say is a day of thought. What would what would we characterize Yom Tov? Because Yom Tov, we know there there is a different. Yeah, mm-hmm. but because because Yom Tov, Oichol Nefesh is mutter. You're allowed to cook, right? For for food, right? So that's a good question, and the answer, the basic answer is that the the real machshava is Shabbos. The, the machshava that I described to you is really Shabbos. Yom Tov is one degree removed, but nevertheless, it's not, it's not choil, it's not weekday. So it's kind of, I, I haven't seen this, so I'm afraid to say it, but maybe an intermediary between the mundane week and the, and the pure thought of Shabbos. So you could maybe say that Yom Tov is the thought as the, as the thought has an association to mundanity, but nevertheless, nevertheless is pulled from the machshava to remain as thoughtful as possible. And that's why certain things are permissible on Yom Tov that are not on Shabbos. Because in Shabbos, you're in union with pure thought. And there, there's no place for any kind of activity, in, even including Ochel Nefesh and those permitted during Yom Tov. But over here, Moshe, the Alter puts them together. Uh, you made a very good point. But over here, he doesn't go into that difference. So again, we go back to what I said a few times, a year ago, in Yen Yachasi. The, re- the theory of le- relativity in Hasidus. If we were to have a discussion here between Yom Tov and Shabbos, this would, w- what you and I just exchanged, would probably be part of that discussion. But that's not, that's not the game over here. So therefore, it's lumped together. Let's continue. Oh, Frate, Hilo, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, just, just before you continue, uh, a thought and a question. I once heard... Um, Rabbi Manus Friedman, Friedman, somebody asked him, well, now that we have the cal- calendar and it's fixed, uh, why do we still have second day Yantav, uh, Gal- Galius? And he said something along the lines of, of uh, well, you, we have a day that we made it, we made it, we made holy, yeah, and we should give it back. Right. And, right. Uh, so, so Lachora, you could say that uh, Yom Tov, because you know, the, because of the because of the Torah uh, emphasizing it and the things that have been learned, is a day that uh, has gone into the realm of kedusha from the realm of thought that we start on Shabbos. Right. Okay. And, and I, I wanted to ask if there's any idea. I see he has a little note here about the um, the uh, sitter of the uh, uh, Rizal on the on the side, and suddenly the the number Yud Gimel jumped out at me as we're talking. I remember that there's a Torah, I think the, I think the Arizal writes that each of the first days, the first 12 days of Elul is like, uh, contains the month, the potential month of the year in potential. Like it has, it's, uh, it has, a, you know, all the, uh, so I yeah, should have a special kavana on the first 12 days. But are you, are, you, are, are you sure it's the first 12 days, not the last 12 days? Because we, in Chabad, we, 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 we say that regarding 
from Chai Elul till Rosh Hashanah is 12 days. But you're, again... Well, that, it, I was going to ask, that's, a, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Is there any idea like that regarding the Yud Gimel Midos uh, uh, at the end of the year kind of idea? So I just that... So, so I thought it was. I thought it was the first twelve days. I have. I, I don't have. I would have to look up the Arizal. I don't have the safer here. If anyone can yeah. look it, if anyone has it, can look it up because okay. that but that's important. Answer, no, I'd like. That's important. Really idea about the last 12. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Good. Right. Okay. I, I. I just. You know. Maybe in shul later. If I come. If I have some svara, maybe I could. But I. I would like to know that. That's that's a good point. But by, but yeah, but, okay. but be that, be that as may, Hillel. That's about twelve, not about thirteen. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, this isn't. Uh, you know, we're not playing numbers here. We're not into numbers exchange. But, right, but but uh, every so day, no. There ev- is some kind of analogy. You mean to say that that you recall that the Arizal says that for thirteen days, certain thirteen days of this month, there was a specific mida. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I'm, that was my question. I'm asking if there's any idea corresponding with the number thirteen with. Days of the month of I, 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 don't, I, I never heard that, but again, you know, um, and from the Alter Re- from the Alter Rebbe's citing that concept, he talks about the entire month of Elul being Yudkim Umi the Sorachanen. But okay, we have to. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Chevra, uh, we spoke a lot, we didn't learn much inside, but let me just finish the question here. Says the Alter Rebbe, during Elul, it's not just a Shabbos and a Yom Tov. We are learning here, we are being told there's an emanation, a, re- a revelation of the 13 attributes. And the Alter Rebbe says, V'heim is galim b'yom the third time. You hear this? We have the 13 attributes throughout the year, every day. V'yav Hashem, tachnum. Then we have the 13 attributes of Elul, and then we have... The ultimate revelation of, of the 13 at Yom Kippur. So, Ubavada Yesh Hefrish Godl Ben Yom Kippur Mu Ben Elul. Dr. Rebbe asks, this is his question. Surely there's a difference between Elul and Yom Kippur. So, what's going on here? This is what he wants to understand. If you're telling me that there's such a great energy of God that's present in the world right now called Yudmila Sarachamim. Why aren't? Why isn't it like a yomtiv? A Shabbos, a yomtiv. We should be in thought, and we shouldn't be involved in the mundane world, i.e., in in, in malacha. And the Alter Rebbe says the proof is, and 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 the fact is, look, that on Yom Kippur we have the ultimate of Yudgim Musarachem, or fasting, or shul. We're totally removed from the world, and we don't. So why isn't why isn't that way Elo? That's his question. Now it sounds on a on way like a. What kind of question is it? What do you mean we should have a full month of yomtiv? Doctor Rebbe says, "Yeah, right now we're at that point. Yes. Again, you have to follow his reasoning, since we're coming from the soul perspective, not from the calendar perspective. Hey, I can now enjoy and and work and talk and 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 write. No." There's energy you're telling me now that you'd give him the Zerachim, if, if it's so special, and it is, and it's here, we, we should be in thought, we shouldn't be working. That's the question. Tomorrow, Mr. Shem will begin to learn the muscle that he gives, the famous muscle of the king, and how he develops a, a response to that question. Anybody else want to say anything? But that's it. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. See everyone tomorrow. Shalom. Bye-bye. Take care. Okay.